Our next topic about sound is an effect called the Doppler effect. All right, before we can actually think about the Doppler effect itself, we have to think about the sound and what it sounds like. All right, now, if I have waves that look like this, they have a particular wavelength to them. So if you look here, the wavelength is relatively high, which means the frequency must be relatively low. Remember, sound waves travel at 331 plus 0.6 times t. So if we have a velocity, our velocity is equal to f times lambda. The velocity uh, is 331 meters per second plus 0.6 times the temperature, and that equals the frequency times the wavelength. Now the default value for the speed of sound, if we don't know the temperature, most people have agreed on room temperature. So unknown temperature, we're going to end up using 343 meters per second for the default value. Now notice, if the wavelength goes up, the frequency has to go down. Now what does that sound like? So when the frequency goes down, the pitch changes. The pitch is the frequency. So we'll have a sound that sounds low. So the pitch here is relatively low because the frequency is infrequent. The frequency is low. So we interpret that with our ears as a low pitch. Okay, now, let's take a look at this wave. All right, if we look, the spacing between these waves, uh, the wavelength is much shorter. So if the wavelength goes down, if the waves are close together, short, that must mean that they are more frequent. Why is this so? In terms of the stride, if we take small, short steps, don't we have to do more frequent ones so that we can keep the velocity at 343 meters per second? This sounds like ah, low, ah, low. So we can change the frequency by changing the wavelength and see how that affects it. Now, an interesting effect occurs. This is called the Doppler effect. Now, when things are in motion, the pitch can change. So we end up changing the frequency of the sounds as things are moving relative to us. Now, here I'm standing watching the cars go by. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to do it, but if we could go outside and listen to the cars as they pass by us, we'd actually hear something. I know what you're thinking. If I wanted to know if a car was approaching me, say when I'm driving, doesn't it get louder as it approaches? Remember, it's a one over r squared function. Yeah. But that's not what I'm talking about. So as things approach, of course, they do get louder, but they actually change the pitch that we hear them at as well. So if I'm, say, at a racetrack, as a car approaches, the pitch goes up. And then when it passes by me, the pitch goes down. So we end up with this. The next car comes. And we get these pitch changes. And you know it too. So even though the loudness doesn't change, you can actually tell whether the police are chasing after you or not, just by the pitch of the siren. Don't you actually know the pitch of a siren just sitting there? And then when you hear it, then the pitch goes up, you go, aha, I think they're on to me. I better throw the money into the woods after I've robbed that bank because I know the coppers are going to come get me. All right, now if you hear, oh, that means they've missed you keep the money, don't put it in the woods, keep it in the back seat of the car, and then make a run for it some other time. All right, now, the question is, where does this Doppler effect come from? And that's what we're going to investigate next.